Good morning, everyone. Kate and Fiona here joining you live for this, uh, this morning and this week's uh, Facebook Live where we're talking about complacency and confidence. So lots of cool stuff um, to share with you on this. If you're tuning in live, please type live below. Um, or if you circle back and check out the replay, um, hit replay in the comments below. Of course, if you've got questions, comments, um, please share them below. We always circle back and uh, take a look at those. And if you know of anyone who could um, benefit from this or any of our other uh, confidence conversations, please um, share it with them or share it with your network as well. So Fee, complacency and confidence. Yes. Yeah. This is um, so cool. You know, we, we talk to people all the time and we find, you know, they're looking for distractions, you know, just from their day to day role. The, maybe their works, you know, become a little bit boring. Um, you know, maybe that's lost its challenge or you don't know what to do next. And so we kind of get into this cycle of even though you're doing a great job, you're sort of coasting along and, you know, maybe you're doing some volunteering. Maybe you're thinking about, you know, uh, helping your friend out with their uh, little side business. Maybe you're even considering your own side hustle, but we're really curious about what's actually going on. Yeah, I think um, this one is really common uh, in terms of perhaps when, um, you know, your, your core role is getting a little bit, maybe not as fulfilling, um, not as challenging uh, as, as you'd like. And so we go looking, right? We go looking for distractions. We start um, saying yes to things maybe we normally wouldn't or we wouldn't have the space and time for. Um, and I think this one around your own side hustle is really interesting. Of course, to do that, you need to have space mentally, emotionally and physically to do that. Um, I'm a huge believer uh, that um, it's not always a good thing uh, to pursue that. And actually, um, you know, we've got uh, resources on this around getting really clear about why you're starting a side hustle is really important. Um, because if it is what, you know, if it's for the wrong reasons, um, either if it's just a distraction or um, if it's for freedom, which we all know starting your own business um, isn't a ticket to freedom uh, for both of us 10 or 20 years into um, running, running our own gigs, um, I think you can, you can get down a really dark hole. But I think, you know, this piece around um, complacency and good enough, uh, we're reading Untamed at the moment, um, brilliant book uh, if you haven't checked it out. Um, and look, this is a conversation I have with clients all the time, right? Um, where, you know, things aren't horrible, uh, but they're not, you know, they're not living their best life. You know, they're not, um, you know, their relationships, their career, particularly perhaps their confidence isn't where it needs to be. Um, and it was actually a client I was talking to yesterday who's in a job. She's probably ready for the next move, um, but she's, you know, it's, it's okay where she's at. Uh, and we were just having a conversation around actually the fact that, because it's not, um, there's not enough pain that the motivation to do something to make a shift and change uh, just isn't there. And she sent me, um, she's also reading uh, Untamed and said, um, maybe it's safer to just stay here. Even if it's not true enough, maybe it's good enough. But good enough is what makes people drink too much and snark too much and become bitter and sick and live in quiet desperation until they lie on their deathbed and wonder what kind of life, relationship, family, world might I have created if I'd been braver and so I think I'm really you know interested at something obviously we have lots of conversations around but you know this piece around how do you um you know accepting good enough versus actually making a choice to step up step in play a bigger game um and and really um you know step into your your, your stretch zone Yes, yeah, there's so much here about the stories we tell ourselves, you know, this distracting ourselves from the real problem, you know, um, you know, we can sort of say, oh, well, I could look at something else, but maybe it'd be worse over there than it is here. And, you know, this whole notion of good enough, it really, it's so easy to stay in this, you know, what we sometimes call the complacency, complacency comfort zone, you know, this idea that well, you know, it's not really that bad. I'm, I'm okay here. Um, and then, as you said, we're not really living um, a full life. We're not being fulfilled. We're not being challenged. We're not growing in that space. We're actually um, invariably stagnating. And I think, you know, uh, it becomes harder and harder to unpack what's going on the longer we stay in that space because we kind of know we're shortchanging ourselves but that's an uncomfortable truth to deal with. And I think there's a piece here about we're avoiding the truth. We're avoiding some hard truths about what's going on for us. Um, you know, where 
constantly just finding those distractions and convincing ourselves that this is enough for me, even that, even that that cycle is playing out in our head, that's kind of a red flag that actually um, I've, I've kind of lost myself here. And, uh, and so this fear of change that's sitting underneath, um, it's really time to kind of, I think, examine that and have a good look at what's actually going on and what are you avoiding through, through uh, this complacency comfort zone. Yeah, I think it, um, on some level, the distractions give you permission to avoid the truth. Um, there's another great line in the book, uh, Untamed, called What's, um, uh, What Feels Better, uh, um, Uncomfortable Truths or Comfortable Lies uh, around the stories we tell ourselves uh, in life. And so I think um, that's, oh, that, that's hit me between the eyes. That's incredible, right? Um, but you're absolutely right. I think, you know, this fear of change, um, what if I end up in a worse situation? You know, I mean, there's a whole lot of story. Um, that we've been unpacked on here. I think that the important piece here is to get really clear on what it's costing you. Um, because, you know, if you're, you know, what you don't know um, is part of the challenge, right? If you're not clear about what else is possible, um, if you don't get a taste for that, then it's much easier to sit in good enough. But the minute you get clear about what the vision of, um, that full life or what your goals might be or what you want to be different. And the minute you start to um, see what you're missing out on uh, and also see what you're giving up right now. So what are the compromise? What is this compromise costing you? Um, you know, we, we know in terms of career, the compounding effect um, of complacency, of staying too long out of loyalty, staying too long out of good enough, um, costs, progression, experience, uh, salary, all of those sorts of things. So there's no question, but it's also costing on the opposite side, um, light, laughter, uh, joy, fulfillment, stepping into your potential, all of those sorts of beautiful things that come um, when we're living, you know, part, we're, we're living life uh, where we are being stretched, where we are being surprised at our own genius, all of those sorts of wonderful things. Yes, yeah, the, the cost of this, um, you know, in the short term is, is quite um, apparent, but the longer term cost of this and this piece about the more we stay, the more we're kind of um, recycling our same old stories and actually it becomes more difficult to look at what's really going on um, to get that clarity. So I think as you're saying this piece about the more I can get in good contact with what, uh, what, what I'm missing out on um, and get a taste and start to uh, think of all that I would have in my life and the full life I would be living were I prepared to step beyond good enough that's where the excitement comes and that's the fuel that means I'm prepared to do something different and I'm prepared to you know actually get clear and then take the action to realize that rather than just have it as a sort of a nice little dream in the back of my mind. Yeah um, I think that's why week one of the acts of confidence program is so confronting right because it is get clear uh, and it is about, you know, what, what do I want that I don't currently have? Uh, what is that costing me? You know, all of that. And, and, and ultimately, and what's stopping me? And, you know, everyone lands on, oh, it's me. Uh, so it's hugely confronting. And I think um, all of that creates a fire, which is really useful. It's confronting and it's challenging, no question. That's why um, being supported through that is really powerful. Having a tribe of people going through it with you at the same point um, is really powerful. But you know, we need something that's going to put a fire on us to drive behaviour change and, and to, um, you know, put some pressure on us to step out of that comfort zone, to do some things new, to fail, um, to face some of those fears as well. And I think that final piece around um, taking action, when we're in movement, when we're moving forward, um, we are getting information and feedback around what works, what doesn't. All of that is good information. Um, so no question clarity uh, and taking action, both of those together um, will be able to move us out of that unfulfilled, bored, complacency, comfort zone, and really stepping into live, living you know, the life um, we were truly meant to be and really fulfilling our potential. So uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, again, thanks for sharing uh, this with your friends. Um, you know, it's a big one for everyone. Um, if you're feeling bored, unfulfilled, stuck, uh, and would like to go a little bit deeper into our work on confidence, please visit our website, calledconfidence.com.au. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you next week.